Okay, guys, that was a major undertaking, but we got it crammed in here really well. Yeah. I don't have enough room in my little tool barn over there to put all this in there. Uh-uh, Spooky, come on. Kitty. He got trapped in my greenhouse on a heat advisory day. Spent the whole day in there. He shouldn't be alive. Um, I pulled him out. He was soaking wet. I didn't cool him down like right away. I gradually did. Got him some water. He had no problem drinking the water. He'd been in here for several hours. So he was very hot. The vent was shut and the door was shut and it gets up to close to 150, 180, depending on the day. I think it was pretty hot that day. And uh, that was in the other greenhouse. He survived, thank God. But we don't want him in here. Come on, kitty. Come on. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Honestly, don't know how I'm going to do this. I just got everything in here, even the floor. <laughs> Look at those beautiful roughwoods. I went ahead and dug them up and put them back in the greenhouse. All right, kitty. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not doing that again. Sorry. Kitty issues. the screen so anyway the first greenhouse it just it was designed kind of funky the air didn't flow through so it got hot so my husband designed it to where that will roll down on that pulley system and it is super neat I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of here I thought I could use these shelves. Be nice if I could have left the door open. Oh. Well, it's nearing the end of this season. The reason I'm getting everything in here now, tonight, is it's just going to be a very, very busy week. And... One day this week, we're getting down to 26 degrees, so that's a hard freeze, and I will need to go ahead and get everything in here. I think I'm going to go ahead and put this blueberry down here. It can stand to get a little cool. All right. <coughs> Weather's changing, so my allergies are bothering me. My voice will come and go. Look at that Leo White eggplant. Crazy. The very end of the season. Been dying to try that one. I've tried that for four years now. So, yeah. Raised beds. And I am going to harvest the seed off this prairie gallardia. I just now brought it in to get a hard freeze. The reason I'm bringing some of this stuff in is for the beneficial bugs. Believe it or not, they do eat the same stuff the bees and butterflies eat too. It'll probably rebloom just like the, uh, the other stuff that I stuck in here. These are this year's. These peppers take a very long time. This is the one I'm growing for the uh, Roughwood seed collection. This is a large black pequin. So those plants right there that are big and tall like that, those are, this is the second season. So going into the greenhouse and this next year will be the third season. I started those from seed. And it, yeah, this will be the third year. So these were started from seed in the spring, and they, they take a long time. They were out with these other ones in the big mineral tubs, and 
I separated those, they were at least 500 feet from every everything else. And then they had the wire gate around it so the deer couldn't get into it. Or anybody had cameras up. But uh, anyway, they did really well. So these, I hope will do really good next year. We'll get those into a big, big pot and put those 500 feet away from all the other peppers. They will do very well. This... This one, I only had, the very first year, I got one plant and one pepper. I took the seeds off of that and I got, I think, 18 plants. So I was able to get a lot of peppers this season, so I was so very excited. And that is the, um, Bruce Boost Yellow Cayenne, and that is a rough wood pepper. There's another one down here. I had those secluded in a location away from everything else. Here's one more of the rough woods, and they are, they were in here. They've been by themselves. They have done really well. Where is it? Yeah, right here. These are extremely hot. Look at that beautiful pepper. I can't even pronounce it. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Seeing I've got some stuff in here uh, for the beneficial bugs. You have to feed them. And then I went ahead and dug up one of the Jimmy Nardellos. And look, it's doing quite well. Indian blanket. So there's pollinator food in here. That'll feed my beneficials. And I don't really see hardly any of them. A lot of the time, that's what's cool about this selfie stick. You can go where I can't hardly reach. So there's one up there in the corner. See, they like to hang out right up there. They may just need to place a really big order, but the bad thing is some of them get out. And some of them get caught in that plastic. But I think there's still some in here because the white flies seem to be knocked out pretty well. But you do have to feed the beneficials. This is some of the broccoli seedlings I never got started. There's the Mallorcan winners. Going to be doing a lot of those this next year for the roughwood, and along with some, a lot of other varieties. So, if you want some of the rarest heirlooms, go to the roughwoodtable.org, and you can pick out some really good, really, really rare heirlooms, and the heirloom book. By William Moyes Weaver. Highly recommend those and his pickling book. Okay, so these are ready. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those a couple more days. I went ahead and put this in here. I have two outside that are okay, guys. It's Wendy Hardnack at Hardnack Farms, and I have a crisis. I have got to get my husband up here help me rearrange everything and see if I can fit everything out of the other greenhouse in here because I only have one heater I'm going to use as much passive heat as possible so I've got some other rocks and stuff in there and then these bricks and <clears throat> I just want to prolong my harvest and do some other stuff and my husband's here to help me so I will show you the end result here's what it looks like now I'm gonna make some room we'll be back in a little bit